number one so the graph given shows f of x equals x plus 3 plus k where k is some integer so that's hard to make sense but let's graph this one right here if you were to graph x plus 3 so it's just a linear function m is 1 and b is 3 so your first dot is going to be 3 then you're going to go up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1 so this line right here is the graph of y equals x plus 3 now what they did is they they shifted it they transformed the graph and they added k so if you add at the very very end of a function that's going to be a vertical shift that's going to take your line and it's going to move it up or down so many units so this blue line looks like it's been shifted down and it has been shifted every dot has been shifted down exactly twice two times so that means the k that they added to this function has got to be a negative two so the original function was y equals uh, x plus three and this new function is y equals x plus three minus two so k is equal to a negative 2. Okay, this graph represents the parent function of all quadratics. So y equals x squared. Now we're going to transform it as well. So move the graph on the coordinate plane to show y equals x minus 4 squared. So you remember the model, y equals a x minus h squared plus k and we just did this guy right here if you add a constant at the very end after you're all done that's going to be a vertical transformation so now this time we're adding inside the parentheses and if you add in the parentheses that's horizontal shift so we're moving it left and right but the big deal is this minus needs to be part of the model not part of the number so if you've got the function x subtract 4, that 4 is actually a positive. So we're going to copy and paste this function 4 units to the right. So move it over right here, and then looks something like that. Okay, number 3, I don't think we ever even talked about these, so this will probably be new. Um, but it's it's not too bad, and I'm not even sure if this is going to show up on the sage. So here's what we've got. This function is uh, some on top, some on bottom. So it's called a rational function. Now this bottom, the number one rule in division is has to do with zeros, and the rule is this guy's okay. Zero divided by ten that's legit that's mathematically alright that's equal to zero so if you think of division like this 6 divided by 2 equals 3 cuz 3 times 2 equals 6 so if you go backwards if you take the answer and multiply it by the denominator it should give you the numerator so let's do this 0 divided by 10 equals 0 cuz 0 times 10 the answer times the denominator equals the numerator so if zero is on top, that's okay. But if zero is on bottom, I can make an argument that that is four. Ten divided by zero is four. What? Now let's take the answer. Four times zero equals ten, and that's not true. So it's not four. And in fact, there's nothing you can put here. If I put ten here, ten, the answer times the denominator, ten times zero is never going to give you the numerator so you cannot ever 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 divide by zero so it's undefined no solution so the number one rule in division is you can never divide by zero so let's take this denominator and let's factor it what multiplies and gives you a 15 but at the same time adds and gives you a 2 so if you change the denominator to make it 
a factored form. It's going to be x and x and 3 and 5. And we're going to go a 5, a minus 5, and x is a positive 3. Because a negative 5 times 3 is a negative 15, but a negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So now, all I did was factor the polynomial on the bottom. Okay, now this is going to make it easier to figure out what numbers am I in danger of. And the numbers are this, x equals 5 and x equals a negative 3. If I plug these two numbers in, if I plug a 5 in place of x, a 5 there, a 5 there, and a 5 there, if I plug a 5 right here, 5 subtract 5 is a 0, and 0 times this is a 0, and that means I've got a 0 on the bottom. And I can never have 0 on the bottom. And that's called, this is going to be a vertical asymptote. The other number that's in danger is a negative 3. Because if I sub a negative 3 in for all these x's, it's going to give me a 0 on the bottom. So here's what's going to happen. x can be anything you want it to be. X can never, ever, ever be, x can't be, a 5 or a negative 3. So on the graph, if you're looking at a graph, there's 5 right here. So we're going to draw this asymptote right here. x can never be 5, or x can never be a negative 3. So these red lines are part of the graph. This red line is never, ever going to touch 5 because it does not exist at 5. So it's going to approach 5. It's going to get closer and closer to 5, but it's never actually going to touch it. And the same coming this way. It's getting lower and lower towards negative infinity the closer it gets to 5. But it can actually never touch 5 because at 5 that function does not exist. So these two asymptotes are where this graph can never exist. It can never touch it. Okay, number four. I don't think we talked about either. Um, you got two different tables describing two different patterns. I mean, you got to figure out which one is an arithmetic sequence and which one is a geometric. And that's actually, it's easy, so nothing to stress about. Now we're figuring out how they're growing. Um, 3 to 6, that went up. 3, 6 to 9, up 3, 9 to 12. Okay, so this is a linear. Now this is a constant rate of change. And linear is arithmetic. If it grows linearly, it's arithmetic. So g of x is arithmetic. Okay, now this one, 3 to 6 went up 3, 6 to 12 went up uh, 6, 12 to 24 went up 12. i got to erase some stuff. And if I keep doing this over and over, it's going to be the same. That's going to be plus 3, plus 6, plus 12, plus 3, plus 6, plus 12. So that means if it's just repeating over and over, it's not growing by addition. It's actually growing by multiplication. 3 to 6, that's times 2. 6 to 12, that's times 2. 12 to 24, that's times 2. So this is exponential. And exponential is geometric. So if it grows by multiplication, that's geometric and it's exponential and that definitely grows faster geometric grows faster than arithmetic so f of x is going to grow faster than g of x so pretty easy if it's a linear constant rate of change that's arithmetic if it grows by multiplication that's geometric okay number five we need to create a graph that represents this scenario. It's got a constant rate of change of 1. That means it's linear. The domain is between 0. Oh, the domain is x is anything greater than or equal to 0. So on this x number line right here, 0. Here's 
where we're going to go. And it's going to be anything to the right, and it includes zero. Okay, my range, my y, the up and down, it's going to start at 2. It's going to include 2, and it's anything above 2. So here we go. Anything to the right is 0, and anything above 2 going up and down. So your function has a constant rate of change. Okay, now I'm going to start it right on 2 and 0, and then I'm going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and it is going to go right here forever. So it starts at 2, goes up to infinity, starts at 0, goes right to infinity, so your graph's got to look something like that. 6. Okay, the parent function is shown, f of x, so this is just a normal parabola. The red dashed parabola has to go f of x subtract 2. So if you subtract at the very end, that's a vertical shift. So it's going to take everything, I guess this red dashed is going to be shifted down twice. Now the blue parabola is a horizontal shift. If you add or subtract inside the parentheses, that moves the left and right. So f of x plus 3 is really this. f of x subtract a negative 3. So there's got to be a minus in this model. So that means the 3 is negative. So we're going to go to the left 3. So something like that. So the blue one, horizontal shift. The red one, a vertical shift. Okay, 7. Quadratic function is shown. Um, A, identify the roots. Okay, the roots are right here. The roots are at a negative 2 and at 6. So there are the roots. Okay, now, if we know the roots, this is actually going to be a piece of cake. Um, B, they want us to come up with the formula for this equation. And the hardest part in finding the formula is the a. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay, a is the dilation. a is if it opens up or does it open down and kind of how steep it is. Or there's the standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a is always the trickiest one to find, but they are telling us that the a is 1. So we don't even need to find the 1, the A. We know it's positive because it's opening up and it's just a standard dilation of 1. So now if you know the roots you can actually find the equation really easily. So the roots, here are my two roots. Negative 2 and 0, that's one of the roots, and then 6 and 0. So if I have the roots, I can work backwards to the equation. The equation is going to be this. 0 equals x, x. I'm going to do x plus 2 and x minus 6. Because if I plug this negative 2 in, the negative 2 plus 2, there's 0. 0 times that is 0. And now I'm just going to multiply distribute, so it's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 2x minus 12. So it's going to be x squared minus 4x minus 12. And this is the equation, it's in standard form, which is kind of what they want. So 1x squared minus 4x minus 12. Okay, 8. On the number line below the graph, show the x intervals on which the function is increasing. Okay, increasing is when it's got a positive slope. That's when it's climbing, it's gaining, it's growing. So it is increasing, looks like twice. So right here is kind of a, a minimum. And then from here on up, it's going up, climb, climb, climb. So that's an area where it's increasing. So let's do that one. Okay, that minimum is at 3. So on my number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, here we go. Here's 3. But I'm going to circle 3, but I'm not going to include it. Because at 3 is where it turns around. 3 is where it's neutral. It's not really decreasing anymore, and it's not really increasing. 
so anything to the right of 3 is growing but not including 3 and then right right here this all has positive slope going up 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 until right there and then we neutral out and that's at negative 2 so negative 1 negative 2 same thing I'm not going to include negative 2 I'm just going to circle it so anything less than negative 2 is where it has a positive slope all the way up to 2 but not including a negative 2 and then anything from 3 on um, Okay, so this is excluded, excluding these two points. So I guess that's how we use these tools. Okay, number nine, a piecewise function. I, piecewise is kind of math three. I don't think we did any math two. Um, but all it is is a function that has a couple different pieces going on. So this one will be a good one to see. So it looks like we've got two different pieces. We've got a linear piece right here. And then we have kind of a curved piece. And our options, it's got to be one of these two. So a radical. Because um, all of these are linear. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. And we know this kind of has some curves. So it's got to be one of these two square roots. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can match which piece to the domain. So this domain right here, x is anything smaller than or equal to 1. So here's 1 right here, and it's smaller than 1, so it's going to be anything going left. But it's equal to 1, so that's why this one is shaded in. At 1, you look at this piece right here, and anything smaller than 1, you look this way. At 1, but not including 1, and anything greater than 1, you look at this top function right here. So this guy, what is the graph of this guy? It's got a negative slope, so it cannot be that, and it cannot be that. And the y-intercept is a negative 3, so it cannot be that. So that means when x is 1 or smaller, it's got to be a negative x minus 3. Okay, now, um, yeah, I guess you got a 50-50 shot. Just type this in on your calculator. Look what it looks like. Type this one in. Look what it looks like and see which one you can determine. And we're going to go with this guy. Square root of x plus 2. Okay, 10. The graphs of two functions are shown. How are they related? State the equation g of x in terms of f of x. So g of x equals, so this g one looks like it's the same as f of x. All they did was slide it to the right. One, two, three. So horizontal shift of three. Horizontal shift of three. So that means f of x minus three in the parentheses. The horizontal shift happens in the parentheses. That's what we should end up with. Okay, last one. Um, fill in the blocks. Here's what we got to do. To show the roots of f of x equals x squared after a shift of three units to the left and one unit down. So here we go. Three units to the left, that's going to be x plus three squared and one unit down, minus one. Okay, so that's the equation. Now if they want the roots of it, this is going to be awesome. We need to do, this is a really good question. x plus three squared is x plus three times x plus three. So if we distribute it all out, it's going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then we got a minus 1. So it's x squared plus 6x plus 8. Okay, now this is what we got to look at. We've got to factor this. What's going to times and give you 8? Add and give you 6. 
and that's going to factor to be x plus 4 times x plus 2. So 4 and 2 adds gives you 6 times it gives you 8. So your roots are going to be a negative 4 and a negative 2. Those are where the roots will be. That's what's going to give you a 0. Okay, now B, um, find the vertex. The vertex is 3 units to the left and 1 unit down. That's going to be a negative 3 and a negative 1. That's where my vertex is. This is the H and this is the K. So your vertex, H, K. This 3 is not positive, though. It's really X minus minus 3 squared minus 1. So vertex is at negative 3, negative 1. Awesome question. And that is it.